Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today our topic is Because Randomness is Only Apparent, Free Will is Impossible. Okay, before we get into the topic, let's just go through the purpose of the show, a brief definition of free will, and a brief explanation of why it's impossible. Okay, <laughs> um, purpose of the show. It's not our fault because we're not in control. Keith, if you could turn up the air a bit more, um, or I don't know if it's coming on because it's kind of hot. Um, basically, the um, our whole civilization, our whole world is founded um, on a mistaken pre premise, on, on the idea that we human beings, you know, we um, are free to choose whatever, whatever we want regardless of uh, anything. and um, and because of this mistaken conclusion, deduction, um, we blame each other, we blame ourselves, we become arrogant, we become envious because of you know, things that other people did sometimes. It just um, creates a lot of unnecessary problems. And um, so the purpose of this show is to like, um, to just overcome it, to just understand that, that no, no, we don't have free wills. You know, uh, human beings do not have free will. The universe is causal. Everything happens according to cause and effect. And that's what makes free will impossible. And um, I may get into this later after, after I go through the, um, this topic. Um, but, um, but, you know, this is important. Um, you know, now, I just want to be clear about what we, society, civilization, tend to mean when we say that we have free will. Um, basically, what we're saying is that, um, that everything is up to us. You know, the, the, the issue is that of control. In other words, if things that we're not in control of are either contributing to or what's actually really happening, creating or, or deciding for us completely, then um, that's a pretty clear indication that um, that free will is not impossible. Uh, I mean, that, that free will is impossible. Um, okay. Um, so let, let's go through this. All right. Um, now, the basic reason the free will is impossible is the principle of causality. And that means <laughs> that everything has a cause. So if everything has a cause, every time we decide anything, every time we think anything, every time we feel anything, there's going to be a cause to it, okay? And then there's going to be a cause to that cause, and a cause to that cause, and a cause to that cause, and these causes are always going back in time. That's the key point. So you have, if you have this chain of cause and effect, that it's going back moment by moment, you know, because again, everything has to have a cause, then that is, uh, that's a very, very clear explanation of why free will is impossible. But, um, and, and, and the only, you know, it's interesting, because like this show is about randomness, and um, the only other option that would make sense to everything being caused is that some things are not caused, and that's what... Um, that's what sometimes physicists and uh, philosophers, um, scientists say when, um, when they say that um, things are random. You know, I mean, there, there are various uses of the word random. Um, you could, like, pick a card from a deck at random, okay? In other words, meaning that you're not picking a card with any kind of, like, you know, if I hold out a card, um, a deck to you, you're not, um, you're not like you know. You're not counting from from one side to the other. You're not. There's no purpose, all right? That's that's the colloquial. That's the kind of like the common, the accepted definition of randomness. But the problem is when um, when physicists who should know better because this is so basic, and um, and other scientists um, claim that. Um, that no, randomness means, you know, in its strongest sense, that some things just are not caused, that some things happen without a cause. 
okay? And, you know, it's just like, that's impossible. It's completely impossible. Everything has to have a cause. Um, it's, really, it's really scientific arrogance, okay? Because a lot of scientists um, are not good scientists, really. You can't blame them because, you know, they don't have a free will. But, like, what, what, one of the things that leads um, some scientists to this erroneous, mistaken conclusion that there is such a thing as randomness is, like, they will um, study a phenomena. They will study some physical activity, like radioactive decay or whatever, and um, and they they won't be able to like to discover all of the uh, um, causes for whatever behavior they're per perceiving or measuring, you know. And that that is what leads them to to conclude. Well, if we can't see that what what's happening, why it's happening, then there can't be a reason for it. There can't be a cause. And you can see how completely illogical that that conclusion is. It's arrogant because you know, obviously. Um, there's something that, that, that causes phenomenon that the scientists aren't seeing, and that's, that is the explanation. <laughs> you know, that's the only explanation. All right. Um, so, okay. And again, like, um, the reason the randomness can only be apparent, that there is no true randomness, is because everything has to have a cause. I mean, you can't, like, all right, let me try to, like, um, let me try to explain this. Just let's say let's say a particle, something, just like pops into existence, like something right there. Okay, it just pops into existence. Right? Some scientists are like, oh my God, that's random. You know, we can't see why. It, you know, one second ago, one moment ago, it wasn't there. The next moment, it's there. You know, they'll call that a random process because well, we can't see what um, what came before it. But it doesn't matter. Our ignorance of a phenomenon doesn't um, dictate its reality or not. You know, we, we have a subjective experience of, of, of reality. So, um, so what's a clearer explanation? Well, obviously, um, something is causing that, that particle um, to appear. It must have been, you know, and, and this is like a basic principle law of, um, of physics. You, 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 Matter can neither be created nor destroyed, okay? This is basic principle, matter, um, mass, energy, okay? And, and if you can't create or destroy mass, energy, matter, anything, you know, the basic constituents of, of reality, then obviously if there was a particle that appears, you know, out of nowhere, it couldn't have been out of nowhere. It must have been somewhere before it appeared where it was, okay? So, okay, so, yeah, how do, how do thinkers get this so wrong, you know, this, this idea of randomness? Well, okay, um, my, you know, you can only guess because it's an error in logic. It's a simple error in logic. There's no more complicated explanation than that. Um, but, but in terms of explaining why, why they get it wrong, um, our educational system is geared to a great extent not on understanding logically what, what happens, you know, what you're presented in school. Um, you get a little of that, but much more of it is on, well, understanding what, um, what people have said before you and then memorizing it, okay? So, um, so basically a lot of physicists, um, who are just basically, you know, a lot of times dealing with equations, with math, you know, they remember, they, they learn the formulas, they, re they learn the equations, they apply them to whatever. Or the philosophers who will um, just learn the various positions of the philosophers who came before them and all. And so, like, there's a lot of physicists, philosophers, scientists who are not very strong on the logic because you have to, um, there's no other explanation. Um, and actually, we're gonna we're gonna do a show on I'm gonna do a show on this next tied in with with this concept of of intelligence um, intelligence and moral intelligence also but um, okay so so basically you know they get it wrong and you know 
the, the, the basic idea is that there is no such thing as true randomness in the sense of things being uncaused. And when you understand that, I mean, like, things are either caused or uncaused, right? <laughs> and if there is no such thing as something being uncaused, then, then, then there is no either or. Things are only caused, okay? Everything has a cause. Okay, so all of our decisions, all of our, you know, thoughts, feelings, um, everything that comes in, everything that we're aware of, you know, is, um, is causal. It, it is the result of a chain of cause and effect. Now, there are different ways sometimes you know, again, the philosophers or some psychologists or, or physicists um, will say, well, you know, sometimes, you know, there are more than one cause, you know, so how can you say that, that it's a cause when there's more than one? Yes, I mean, it depends how you, do, how you explain or define cause. The, um, the most general, all-encompassing, universal <laughs> explanation of causality is that you have we have one universe. There's one reality. There's not two. There's just one. And if you know, if you want to talk in terms of multiverses, you know, well, then those different quote-unquote multiverses would have to be subsumed, would have to be within the one overall reality. There is a statement in um, in um, Judaism. I'm going to do a show on this. Hopefully, um, it's actually a, it's. Um, yeah, it's it's one of the um, most important statements in, in Israel. It's um, it's a prayer, I guess. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. And um, sorry, that's my Israel. I mean, I I never really learned um, Jewish so much or Hebrew. Um, but basically, what that means, because I, I was Orthodox Jewish for a while. What that means is that, uh, hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So, like, you know, that was very important to Judaism because before Judaism there were, like, many gods and then, you know, people had to understand, wait a minute, there's just one God. So when you, when you tie in, like, you know, take a more scientific perspective and understand that, you know, when you say God from a religious perspective, from a scientific perspective, what, you, what you're really saying is the universe, you know, because if God is omnipresent, then obviously God is everywhere, and if God is everywhere, obviously God is the universe. So, so, um, so that, that's, you know, you have the state of the universe evolution. In other words, like um, the entire universe is evolving. You know, like we, we can only like speculate that it started about seven, um, 13.7 billion years ago, you know, the Big Bang. Um, but, um, but that's, you know, everything that happens, you have to understand, like when we make a decision, it can't be outside of the universe, okay? It has to be contained within the universe. And so, like, any decision, any thought, any, anything we do um, has to also be, naturally, the, the direct result of the state of the universe at the moment prior to our doing or feeling or, or, or whatever, you know, or thinking what we're thinking. That's the key. You know, you've got the entire state of the universe expressing the cause. And this, you know, again, the, the reason to invoke um, state of the universe causality on this is because it, it answers simply the question, of, well, you know, is there one cause or are there many causes, whatever, how many causes are there? If you want to be most precise about it, there's only one cause, really. It's the, the state of the universe, you know, moving through, um, through time. You know, um, the state of the universe at one time leading to the state of the universe of the next moment, leading to the state of the universe of the next moment. Okay, uh, so let's see. Now, this is like, this, this is serious, I mean, because like, again, in physics, um, while well, I was preparing for um, a physics paper that, um, that actually um, ultimately didn't get written, it turned into what, um, this book that I wrote, um, I looked into some physics textbooks 
you know, I wanted to know college level f physics textbooks. I wanted to know what they were teaching about causality, which is basically the, the fundamental, essential um, principle in the universe. In other words, nothing happens without causality, cause and effect. Again, because nothing happens without a cause. So, um, so what I found out is that, um, well, one, some, some physics um, textbooks don't even deal with the, with the term. That you, you won't find the term randomness in, 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 um, in some of them. Some of them just wrongly apply it. They'll, they'll apply it um, in relation to something that's referred to as the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And we might as well go into this because I think this this has um, confused a lot of physicists and other thinkers for um, decades. Okay. In physics, um, basically, before the advent of quantum mechanics, you could measure the position and the momentum of a particle of anything, a macro object, whatever, you know, with enough precision to make an accurate prediction. Okay, and um, the simple physics of that, there, you know, is that basically if you're using, let's say, a photon to measure, let's say, the movement of a, of a grapefruit or a basketball or something, a macro object, the photon is so small, it's not going to interfere with, with the uh, trajectory, with the momentum, you know. This gets a little complicated. All right. Um, the, the idea is um, when you get, to, all right, that's at the macro level. And so, like, you know, you have this Newtonian physics, classical mechanics, where, yeah, you could simultaneously measure the position and momentum of a particle with enough accuracy, you know, to make a prediction. Now, this Heisenberg uncertainty principle says, well, you can't do that completely, and that's true. But at the macro level, it just doesn't matter. But <laughs> when you get to the um, level of, of atomic particles, subatomic particles, quantum particles, then what happens is like a, pho uh, a measuring particle like a photon will be used to measure another particle. And because they're relatively around the same size, when the photon, photon interacts with the target particle, it's going to change the momentum. You know, it's going to impart mass energy to that first target particle. And it's going to influence its, its, um, its behavior, its future behavior. All right. Nobody, no serious scientist contests the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. But what is in um, great contest, um, greatly contested now, is um, the illogical, absurd conclusion that was uh, made by physicists like um, Warner Heisenberg and Niels Bohr, who are actually um, two of the pioneers of, of quantum mechanics. I mean, these are like top-level physicists. It led them to conclude um, that, well, since we can't simultaneously measure the position and momentum of a particle, that means that particle behavior, you know, that particle behavior is somehow random or uncaused. You'll, 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 see, you'll see more of the term random in these college textbooks than the, the because like, it would be kind of like pretty, you know, to use the term, you know, this behavior is acausal or uncaused, I think it would like just raise too many flags uh, for, um, for students who say, wait a minute, no, you know, everything has a cause. So, um, so in a lot of these textbooks, they'll use the word random because it's a bit nebulous, it has different meanings, but the way they use it um, related to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is to try to disprove the fact that everything has a cause, the fact that we live in a deterministic universe where cause and effect is the principle that governs everything. So, okay, so... Um, so yeah, and again, um, there's no logical, you know, fine, you can't simultaneously measure the position and momentum of a particle. How do you get from that fact to the fact that, well, if, you, if we can't know all the information about this particle to uh, make a prediction, it somehow can't have a cause? Um, I wrote 
I wrote a paper on this, short paper, uh, on this recently, relatively recently, and I submitted it to um, the International Journal of Theoretical Physics, and they they agreed to review it. View it. I think they they took of it maybe three months. They they ultimately declined to publish, and like. If you write a psychology paper for a peer-reviewed journal, you know, they, if they decline to publish, if you've submitted they decline to publish, you will get some kind of like explanation as to why. With physics, they, they don't do that. They'll just, let, but anyway, the, um, I just want to explain what this paper was about because I, it just answers this, this um, it addresses the logic of, of, of claiming that the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, you know, um, prohibits um, causality makes things random. Okay, we've got about six and a half minutes. So I think I can do this. Okay, um, again, when we were explaining ma classical mechanics, Newtonian mecha mechanics, uh, physics, basically, if we're measuring, let's say, uh, a basketball with a photon, the basketball's too big to be affected by a tiny photon, you know, dashing into it to measure it. So, like, its momentum um, and position can be, you know, accurately enough measure to, to make a prediction. Okay, now, again, with, with, with the quantum level, you've got a photon that's about the same size, or, you know, relatively as, as the, the measuring particle, it could be an electron, whatever, and um, it's got, the, the idea is like, their, their sizes are relatively similar enough for there to be that interaction, that interference. In other words, when I, what, what this paper, um, what this paper describes is that, okay, fine. Now, um, one of the things in physics is that, like, physicists sometimes say, well, you know, I, um, this goes back as far as to even, like, with the Greeks. Like, sometimes physicists say, well, this is the smallest particle that, that exists, you know, and then they'll say that, you know, but I mean, actually, if, if it's a real scientist, they'll say, this is the smallest particle that we have found, okay, which is completely different from saying this is the smallest particle that exists. And the reason this is very important is because, like, let's say, let's say you've got an electron. You want to measure the position and momentum of electro an electron with enough precision to not have to rely on the, the quantum probabilities, to be able to like make the prediction with standard classical mechanics. So how do you do that? You can. All you'd have to do, have in principle is a particle, couldn't be a photon, but a measuring particle that was small enough so that the interference would happen. So in other words, like, so that like, the, the electron to this measuring particle would be like a basketball, okay? So you, you've got the same proportions now going on at the quantum level that you have at the macro level, and that, um, that is one way to, um, to just, like, explain how, um, how even at the quantum level you can actually use this, um, in, in principle, this classical mechanics to, um, to make the predictions. Okay. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm going to like, you know, I'm going to re revise the book I just wrote, and I think I may put that paper in there and another one. They're very short papers, and I think they're good reads, you know, because it, they do um, describe things at a very fundamental level, and, and, you know, they're very short papers, actually. Okay. Um, so now another, another topic that I want to relate, yeah, this is actually related to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, but it's also related to randomness as a term. Sometimes when you ask a physicist um, what's the definition of randomness, sometimes, you know, if, if they think that, that, um, that you're going to refute their, um, their statement that it's a causal, that, you know, randomness means that, you know, things aren't caused, sometimes what they'll say is, well, Random, randomness means that something's unpredictable. It means that, you know, but, but that is wrong. That is, randomness does not mean that it's unpredictable. First of all, again, you've got to remember, there is no such thing as true randomness because everything has a cause. But, um, but the reason the unpredictable um, description of randomness is wrong is because, well, one, because... Um, 
causality is also generally unpredictable. In other words, like, um, all right, if you're the universe, if you're God, and you know the state of the universe right now, then you can very accurately, completely accurately predict the state of the universe a million years from now or, or predict what it was a million years back, okay? If you are everything, you know, presumably you know everything. But human beings are not everything. We have a limit to our knowledge. We're subjective beings. So if we are... Um, if we're trying to... Um, I lost my train of focus. We got about a minute um, and a half to go. Um, oh, all right. So yeah, because we're we're human beings, we don't have access to you know to make a completely accurate prediction, even under classical mechanics. Um, you'd have to know the um, everything in the universe. You'd have to know the, the position and momentum of every particle in the universe, or or just even even the position, whatever. And that's just not possible um, because, you know, um, I mean, because we're sub subjective means. All right. I think, I think we've, we've kind of like really um, gotten a handle on why there is no such thing as randomness because randomness really means uncaused and nothing is uncaused. And so that leaves us only with causality. And that's why free will is impossible. About 45 minutes, seconds left. And I just remembered I want to do a commercial for my show. The Messenger, who's a very good friend of mine, produces a show in Manhattan on Manhattan Neighborhood Network Channel 56 on Wednesday nights, 11 p.m. It's a live debate show. It's called Myth Free Will. So if you believe what you have a free will, I mean, if you live in Manhattan, you can catch it on, on their local cable. If you live anywhere else, Manhattan Neighborhood Network streams the episodes live so you can watch it on a computer and call in. All right, well, that's all we're gonna, we have time for today. Um, you know, we're going to keep, um, this show was, you know, really stuck to the physics and to the to logic of why free will is impossible. We're going to do with the other stuff. <laughs> All right, see you soon.